Welcome, you dogs. Oh, wait. Uh, no, sorry. Hello, and welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I am your host, Liam, aka Himbar, and today I have an experiencing for the first time video, and it's been quite a while, but let's get right into it. Okay, so I recently read this book, The Valentine's First Volume of Conan Stories by Robert E. Howard, who is, of course, the inventor of Conan. Now, you know, after his death, everyone and their dog got to write Conan novels, but this is their original stuff, and I haven't read any Conan at this point. I just got into Sword and Sorcery this year, or the first, my first one a couple years ago. But I decided I should read this, and I started way back in September, or August even. I started way back in August. And I decided I would read these in between other reads. I was very consistent in that, especially, I mean, I'll kind of get into the reasons why, but overall, I really enjoyed The Coming of Conan the Sumerian. Now, the last video I made for this series, and the only one I've made besides this one, is for Clark Ashton Smith. I read a compilation of some of his works. Now, Robert E. Howard did a lot of contemporary work with Smith. They both were one of the big writers for weird tales back in the 30s, the other one being H.P. Lovecraft. And so I really enjoyed it, but Robert E. Howard is known for creating the sword and sorcery genre, which is slowly, not even slowly, just quickly becoming one of my favorite genres. So I don't know why it took me so long to get into reading his works, but I'm really, really glad I did. And so let's get right on into that. Okay, so Robert E. Howard died very young. He died when he was about 30, I believe. And so we have Quite a bit of Conan's tales from him. There's two other volumes of Conan stories from Valentine, and I actually have one already. I have the second one, The Bloody Crown of Conan, <laughs> because I was so excited after reading this one to, to get to that. But I want to go into some of my thoughts. So Conan the Barbarian, also known as Conan the Sumerian, he's from Samaria. He is considered a barbarian by most people in the land that he does all his adventures. Now this is the Hyborian Age. So it's after the fall of Atlantis, it's after all the cataclysms that destroyed Atlantis, and but it's before our actual history. There's even gods mentioned that are real gods or were worshipped in our world, you know. So this is like I don't know. I heard someone mention like 10,000 BC at one point. Anyways, it's it's prehistory basically, and which is a really cool setup. It's similar in a way to Middle Earth even, though this felt more connected to Earth rather than Middle Earth does. So overall, there are 13 stories in this book, and I figured out these are the written order. Now, for example, I think at least one of these was not published in his lifetime, but these are the order he wrote the Conan stories in. Now, the first one, The Phoenix on the Sword, was definitely not my favorite, which is actually why I kind of went slow initially with this. But it was also originally supposed to be a story about another character. His previous sword and sorcery character, Cole, the Exile of Atlantis. And to be completely honest, those first couple stories really seem like Howard was getting more into the character. Because you have... The Phoenix on the Sword, which is fine, but it's a King Conan story. This is when Conan becomes a king. I honestly didn't know the character was ever a king, but most of the stories he's not a king in, though some of them he is. There's not really any chronology here. You can just read whatever the heck you want. Oh, but reading this first story, I was surprised how modern the prose was. It was very easy to read, even though these stories are about 90 years old. And honestly, I really, really enjoyed it. I mean, there's some things that make it a little antiquated, but I mean, maybe it's just based off what I've already read. I don't think you'd have a hard time reading really. Now it's not like super fast paced, but it's very well written. And Howard was definitely a bookish guy. He knew how to write and you can tell it's very nicely written. The second story, The Frost Giant's Daughter, which I think is also called Gods of the North. I don't think that was published for Weird Tales, but it was very short, very interesting. It gives you a nice look at Conan who's who's basically fearless. He's, he's really not. He's really not fearless. That's one thing you learn throughout his other stories is that he does, he fears. I mean, he, he is afraid of, of other things. He is a man still. Now, I will say most of the time he's afraid, or maybe all the time he's afraid, it's because it's something supernatural. He's going against something that is not like a human. It's not natural, right? It's something that has to do with wizardry or sorcery or some such, or like cosmic horror beam type things. So, but even when that is the case, he still faces his foes and wins you know what i mean like he's super tough but he'll definitely come out very injured in a lot of these stories he's also a lot more roguish like he, there's a couple stories where he's basically just stealing things or is attempting to anyways it's really interesting and then the third story which is one i know wasn't published in his lifetime was the god in the bowl it's a mystery story which 
I actually thought it worked okay. I mean, it's a little different and definitely doesn't show back up, in the, at least in this set, but I enjoyed it. Now, the number four was the big one. I've heard a couple people mention that it's their favorite. It wasn't my favorite, but it definitely showed more Conan action. It's called the Tower of the Elephants. I believe this is, as far as chronology goes, the earliest one, the earliest Conan story. The rest, they don't even work chronologically, like you can't put one after the other. But this one, the Tower of the Elephant, is pretty stinking good. And honestly, honestly, it's really good. I really enjoyed it. It's not my favorite. I'll get into my favorite later. But I really enjoyed it, honestly. In fact, I think that I'm going to be reading Conan the Invincible here soon. And I believe the Tower of the Elephant is, the, is one thing I heard that is good to read before you read that. But that one's about Conan, again, being a rogue. He's attempting to steal something. So but it's really awesome when you're reading a lot of these stories because a lot of them are kind of like novelette links, but most of them are short stories, or at least you could call them short stories. And it's amazing how satisfying they can be and how much of a page turner it can be. Because I'm not a huge fan of short stories, and that's sort of for reasons, you know, when you're reading a novel and you have to get into the novel in the first couple of chapters, well, short stories are just the first couple of chapters, and that's it. But it's nice because sometimes Howard, which is pretty common sense and for sword and sorcery to start like right in the middle of the action. Then we had the Scarlet Citadel, which basically showcased that Howard could write large battle scenes. And it was honestly, it was a pretty fun one in my mind. It had intrigue and blood. And then we had Queen of the Black Coast, which, you know, looking at pastiche covers of Conan, it's always big beefy Conan with some beautiful lady, right? You know what I mean? And the first couple stories didn't have that at all. And so it was interesting to see that the Queen of the Black Coast started that. I believe it was actually after the Queen of the Black Coast, or starting with the Queen of the Black Coast and every subsequent story, there Conan is with a lady somewhat. Sometimes they don't play a very big role at all, but there's a lady, there's some, there's some beautiful woman that is somehow involved in the story. Not being said, I wasn't a huge fan of a lot of the Queen of the Black Coast, but I really, really liked the ending of it. But I do want to read a little excerpt from Queen of the Black Coast, actually. This is the start of chapter three. Some of these stories are separated into chapters. Quote, first there was the blackness of an utter void with the cold winds of cosmic space blowing through it. Then shapes vague, monstrous and evanescent rolled in dim panorama through the expanse of nothingness as if the darkness were taking material form. The winds blew in a vortex form, a whirling pyramid of roaring blackness. From it grew shape and dimension then suddenly, like clouds dispersing, the darkness rolled away on either hand and a huge city of dark green stone rose on the bank of a wide river, flowing through an illimitable plain. Through the city moved beings of alien configuration. I just felt like that, when I read that paragraph, that that kind of showed the setting and the tone that Howard pulls off pretty well. For that, we had Black Colossus, which is actually probably my favorite of the story, and that's partially because a good chunk of the story, really the first probably three-fourths of it, is from the point of view of someone that is not Conan. Only the end is really from Conan's point of view. And that's because it's all set up. And the ending is the big fighting where you actually see Conan and you get it from his point of view. But it's interesting because also the first, pa the first part is from someone that you get a nice mystery set up. And then we have the Princess Yasmela who is viewing Conan and getting to know Conan. And it's really nice to see that through her eyes. And then there are several more stories after that. I don't want to go into every single one of them. But I mostly just wanted to say that Really, after Tower of the Elephant, and then especially after Black Colossus, I felt like I was really, really, really enjoying these stories. I found myself going through them way quicker than I had before. And, you know, honestly, I'm so glad I started reading this stuff. And I would I would highly recommend Howard to anyone, especially for Sword and Sorcery November here. If you want to participate, you just have to pick up one story. And I'm sure some of these can be found online. And a lot of them are very short. Now, a lot of people would recommend the Tower of the Elephant because it is his origin, so to speak, but really any of them because really any of them are good. I would recommend the Black Colossus, but I mean, yeah, maybe it's whatever. But overall, I'm glad I picked this up. And to be personally honest, I, I like him better than Smith, Clark Ash and Smith. He's, he's a better writer in my mind. At least I, maybe he's not a better writer. I like his writing more and his plots are definitely better than Clark Ash and Smith's. Now, his horror isn't as good, but it's still pretty darn good. In fact, let me read some of the quotes. There's tons of quotes all over this book from other famous authors. So Stephen King said, Howard's writing seems so highly charged with energy that it nearly gives off sparks. Charles DeLint said, Howard was a true storyteller, one of the first, and certainly among the best. You'll find in heroic fantasy. If you've never read him before, you're in for a real treat. And that's, that's true. There's a lot more, honestly. Let's see. David Gemmell 
said, I adore these books. Howard had a gritty, vibrant style, broadsword writing that cut its way to the heart with heroes who are truly larger than life. I heartily recommend this to anyone who loves fantasy. Eric Nyland said, which is an author I know, he wrote the first Halo book, the voice of Robert E. Howard still resonates after decades with readers. Equal parts ringing steel, thunderous horse hooves, and spattered blood. Far from being a stereotype, his creation of Conan is the high heroic adventurer. His raw muscle and sinews, boiling temper, and lusty laughs are the gauge by which all modern heroes must be measured. For Stark, living fear what other writers even in the running with Robert E. Howard. That's H.P. Lovecraft. And there's others, there's Paul Anderson, David Drake, Harry Turtledove, and Michael Moorcock. So, tons and tons of praise, and I think there's even more in the back. So, lots of praise for Robert E. Howard's Conan. I'm really looking forward into, to getting into more. I mean, he just has sense of, such a sense of savagery, primal terror, bestial fighting. I mean, it's really, really, really good stuff. And it's, again, like I said, I'm somewhat surprised that this wasn't written this year. Maybe, like I said, maybe his writing style is a little antiquated, but besides that, like, the story is just broad sword, fast paced, amazing. And I'm so glad I finally picked up Robert E. Howard's Conan. And let me know if you read any Conan. Let me know what your favorite stories are. Let me know when you first read Robert E. Howard's Conan. And anyways, hopefully I expressed what I liked about this pretty well. And we'll see what I have next for, for experiencing for the first time. But anyways, this has been Liam with Liam's Lyceum. I'll catch you next time.